Ethiopia has a long and beautiful history dating back thousands of years. The ancient kingdom of Aksum, which was located in what is now northern Ethiopia, was noted for its magnificent obelisks and colossal buildings. These constructions acted as markers and tombs, and they demonstrated the time's great engineering skills. Ethiopia achieved great advances in modernization, particularly infrastructural development, under the reign of Emperor Menelik II. Menelik II is credited for establishing Ethiopia's telegraph, railroad, and postal services. The Addis Ababa Djibouti Railway, which connected Ethiopia to the Red Sea, was a watershed moment. Emperor Hale Selassie, who reigned from 1930 to 1974, also helped to construct infrastructure. He developed contemporary institutions, founded Ethiopian airlines, and began the construction of modern roads and buildings in Addis Ababa, the capital. All of these grand infrastructural projects leave a sentiment that Ethiopia has always been at the forefront of infrastructural innovation, and in recent times, that sentiment remains unchanged. In this video, we're going to be looking at the new wave of infrastructural projects that will define a new age in Ethiopia. But first, please take a second to hit the like button on this video and subscribe so more people can see this. The Tendaho Sugar Factory The Tendaho Sugar Factory is a component of the Ethiopian government's efforts to modernize and develop the country's sugar sector. Ethiopia has traditionally relied heavily on sugar imports, and the government intended to make the country self-sufficient in sugar production. The factory is located in northern Ethiopia's Afar region. The area was chosen strategically because the region's lowland climate and closeness to the Awash River provide ideal conditions for sugarcane cultivation. The factory was intended to be a large-scale sugar processing facility capable of crushing a considerable volume of sugarcane. With designs for an integrated sugar and bioenergy complex, it was supposed to produce both sugar and power. The Ethiopian government made a significant investment in the factory, with funds coming from both domestic and international sources. The project aimed to create jobs, encourage economic development in the Afar region, and help Ethiopia meet its sugar production targets. The Tendaho Sugar Factory project was designed to be completed in stages. The first phase included the construction of the sugar processing plant as well as accompanying infrastructure such as irrigation canals and roads. The project was expected to grow in subsequent phases. During its development, the Tendaho Sugar Factory project encountered some difficulties. Construction delays, technical challenges, and questions about the project's economic feasibility have all been highlighted. The project was also criticized for its environmental and social consequences, notably those connected to land usage and the displacement of local residents. When fully operational, the factory was intended to have a favorable impact on the local and national economies by increasing sugar production and potentially generating power. It could also help with job creation and infrastructural development in the Afar region. 24. The Kuraz Sugar Factory The Kuraz Sugar Factory is a large-scale sugar manufacturing plant in southwestern Ethiopia's Omlo River Basin. It is one of Africa's largest sugar plants, having a capacity of 2.5 million quintals of sugar per year. In addition, the factory generates ethanol, power, and other byproducts. The Ethiopian Sugar Corporation ESC, collaborated with the Chinese construction company COMPLANT to build the factory. The facility opened in 2018 and began commercial production in 2019. The Kuraz Sugar Factory is predicted to have a large economic impact in Ethiopia. The facility is expected to generate more than 100,000 employment and more than $1 billion in income per year. The plant will also help Ethiopia decrease its reliance on imported sugar. The factory is projected to have a positive social impact in addition to its economic benefits. The plant employs and trains locals while simultaneously sponsoring the development of schools, clinics, and other social infrastructure initiatives. 23. The Wanji Sho Sugar Factory 
The Wanji Sho Sugar Factory is in the Oromia region of Ethiopia, in the country's center. It is located near the town of Wanji, about 120 kilometers southeast of Addis Abeba, the capital. The Wanji Sho Sugar Factory was one of Ethiopia's first sugar factories, and it has a long history dating back to the 1950s. It is regarded as a forerunner in the country's sugar sector. The Wanji Sho Sugar Factory has gone through various phases of growth and renovation over the years. Ethiopia's government and development partners have invested in infrastructure upgrades, including the construction of new sugar processing plants and accompanying infrastructure. The factory has a considerable processing capacity and can crush massive amounts of sugarcane to generate sugar. It has aided the country's efforts to boost sugar output and meet domestic demand. In addition to sugar production, the Wanji Sho Sugar Factory has promoted sugarcane cultivation in the surrounding area. To ensure a consistent supply of sugarcane for processing, the firm collaborates with local farmers. The Wanji Sho Sugar Factory has benefited both the local and national economies. It creates jobs, encourages economic development, and contributes to the growth of Ethiopia's sugar sector. The expansion and operation of Ethiopian sugar factories particularly Wanji Shaw, have faced obstacles as have many large-scale industrial enterprises. These may include technical challenges, delays, environmental concerns, and land use and community relocation disputes. Some Ethiopian sugar refineries, including Wanji Shaw, have been combined sugar and energy complexes. This means that they not only make sugar, but also generate electricity from sugarcane byproducts, which can be a valuable source of renewable energy. 22. The Tana Bells Multipurpose Project The Tana Bells Multipurpose Project is an Ethiopian hydroelectric power and irrigation project. The project is intended to transport water from Lake Tana, Ethiopia's largest lake, to the Bells River, a tributary of the Nile River. The project will generate energy, provide irrigation water, and regulate the Nile River's flow. The project is divided into four major components a dam on Lake Tana to control water flow into the Bellas River, a tunnel connecting Lake Tana to the Bellas River. On the Bellas River, there is a hydroelectric power facility and a canal system for distributing water to fields along the Bellas River. The project will produce 460 MDU of electricity, enough to power over 2 million homes. The project is also expected to deliver irrigation water to more than 140,000 hectares of land. This would help Ethiopia enhance agricultural output and lessen its reliance on food imports. The project is also projected to have a good environmental impact. The project will aid in the regulation of the Nile River's flow, lowering the risk of flooding and drought. In addition, the project will develop a new wetland environment along the Bellas River, providing home for birds and other wildlife. 21. The Giljul Jive 3 Hydropower Project the Giljul Jive 3 hydropower project is located on the Omo River in southwestern Ethiopia's Jimazone in the Oromia region. The Omo River empties into Lake Turkana in Kenya. The project's major goal is to generate power and contribute to Ethiopia's expanding energy demands. It is part of Ethiopia's strategy to become a major regional electricity supplier, as well as a means of improving domestic electricity availability. The dam is an arch dam and one of Africa's tallest structures. It is roughly 250 meters tall with a crest length of approximately 610 meters. The reservoir of the dam can hold around 14 billion cubic meters of water. The project has a large amount of generating capacity. The hydroelectric project has 10 turbines, each of which has a capacity of 187 megawatts for a total capacity of 1,870 megawatts. This makes it one of Africa's largest hydroelectric plants. The project contributes significantly to Ethiopia's domestic electricity supply. It is critical in supplying electricity to Ethiopian families, enterprises, and infrastructure projects. Furthermore, Ethiopia aspires to export surplus electricity to neighboring countries such as Kenya and Sudan, which would strengthen regional energy cooperation.
Large dams, such as Gilgild Guide 3, can cause environmental and socioeconomic concerns. The dam has the potential to disrupt local ecosystems, harm fisheries, and displace residents living along the river. To address these concerns, mitigation measures and environmental studies have been implemented. The Gilgil Jibe 3 hydropower project has the ability to support regional economic development and contribute to national economic prosperity. Electricity export earnings can be a substantial source of money for Ethiopia. 20. The Matama Sugar Factory The Matama Sugar Factory is a large-scale sugar processing plant in Ethiopia's Amhara region, some 200 kilometers northeast of Addis Abeba. It is one of Ethiopia's largest sugar factories, with a capacity of 136,000 tons of sugar per year. In addition, the factory generates ethanol, power, and other byproducts. The Ethiopian Sugar Corporation, ESC, collaborated with the Chinese construction business Hujin Group to build the factory. The facility opened in 1970 and began commercial production in 1971. The Matama Sugar Factory is a large employer in the Amhara region and has a substantial economic impact. The factory directly and indirectly employs around 10,000 people. The plant also serves as a market for local farmers' sugarcane. The Matama Sugar Factory is also a major sugar exporter. Sugar is exported from the factory to Sudan, Kenya, and Somalia. Ethiopia benefits significantly from the factory's exports. The factory is projected to have a positive social impact in addition to its economic benefits. The plant employs and trains locals while simultaneously sponsoring the development of schools, clinics, and other social infrastructure initiatives. 19. Tanabella's Sugar Factory Tanabella's Sugar Factory is located in Ethiopia's Amhara region. It is located in the Tanabella's area, close to Tanabella's. The Tana Bellas Sugar Factory's major purpose is to manufacture sugar for internal consumption and lessen Ethiopia's reliance on sugar imports. Sugar is an integral component of Ethiopian cuisine, and boosting domestic production is critical for food security and economic stability. Over the years, the factory has gone through numerous stages of development and expansion. It is part of Ethiopia's larger sugar industry development initiative, which includes the construction and modernization of numerous sugar mills across the nation. Tanabella's sugar factory can process a large amount of sugar cane and produce both white and brown sugar. It contributes to the country's efforts to increase sugar output in order to meet domestic demand. Tanabella's, like many other sugar refineries in Ethiopia, is inextricably related to sugarcane agriculture. To provide a steady supply of sugarcane for processing, the business collaborates with local farmers and cooperatives. The factory benefits both the region and the country as a whole. It creates job opportunities, promotes local development, and aids the growth of Ethiopia's sugar sector. Some Ethiopian sugar plants, such Tanabels, are part of integrated sugar and energy complexes. This means they create electricity from sugarcane processing byproducts, adding to Ethiopia's renewable energy output. Large-scale industrial projects, such as Tanabels, frequently confront problems such as technical constraints, building delays, and concerns about land use and relocation of local residents. Environmental and societal consequences are also being studied and mitigated. Sugar is a crucial commodity, hence achieving self-sufficiency in sugar production is critical for Ethiopia's food security. Reduced reliance on sugar imports helps to stabilize prices and assures a steady supply for the populace. 18. The Chamoga Yeda Hydropower Project The Chamoga Yeda Hydropower Project is a 280 megawatt hydroelectric power facility on the Chamoga River in Ethiopia's Amhara region. The Ethiopian Electric Power Corporation is developing the project, which is scheduled to be finished in 2026. The Chamoga Yeda Hydropower Project is made up of three components, a dam, a reservoir, and an electric plant. The dam is a 120-meter-high concrete gravity dam that will produce a 325 million cubic meter reservoir. Two Pelton turbines with a total capacity of 280 megawatts will be installed at the power facility. 
The project will generate electricity to address Ethiopia's expanding electrical demand. The initiative will also assist Ethiopia in reducing its dependency on imported fossil fuels. The project is also projected to benefit the local economy. During development and operation, the project will produce jobs, as well as a market for local goods and services. The Chamoga Yida Hydropower Project is projected to have a positive social impact in addition to its economic benefits. The project will supply local residents with a consistent source of electricity, thereby improving their quality of life. The project will also increase access to education, healthcare, and other social services. 17. The Janael Dawa 3 Hydropower Project the Janael Dawa 3 hydropower project is situated on the Janael Dawa River in the southeastern part of Ethiopia. The Janael Dawa River flows through the Somali region, and the project site is near the town of Geladin. The project's principal goal is to generate power. It is part of Ethiopia's overall effort to maximize hydropower potential in order to fulfill rising energy demands while reducing dependency on fossil fuels. The dam, reservoir, and power-producing plant are all part of the project. The dam, which is normally an embankment dam, is constructed to catch and hold water from the Janael Dawa River. This stored water is then used to generate power through the use of turbines and generators. The project is intended to have a substantial capacity for electricity generation. It frequently creates electricity by combining many turbines with a combined capacity of several hundred megawatts or more, contributing to Ethiopia's energy grid. Large-scale hydropower projects, such as Janael Dawa Aiwi, can boost economic development in the region. They support local businesses and contribute to the country's economic growth by creating jobs during building and operation. Hydropower project construction and operation can have environmental and social consequences. They could have an impact on local ecosystems, water quality, and wildlife habitats. Furthermore, they may result in the relocation of communities living near the project area. To address these concerns, mitigation measures and environmental assessments are often implemented. The project's electricity is incorporated into Ethiopia's national power system, supplying electricity to enterprises, businesses, and households throughout the country. 16. The Humira Sugar Factory The Humira Sugar Factory is a large-scale sugar processing plant in Ethiopia's Tigray region's Humira Wareda. It is one of Ethiopia's largest sugar factories, having a capacity of 1.5 million quintals of sugar per year. In addition, the factory generates ethanol, power, and other byproducts. The factory is a key employment and contributor to the local economy in the Humera Wareda. The factory directly and indirectly employs around 10,000 people. The plant also serves as a market for local farmers' sugarcane. The factory is a key employment and contributor to the local economy in the Humera Wareda. The factory directly and indirectly employs around 10,000 people. The plant also serves as a market for local farmers' sugarcane. The factory is also a major sugar exporter. Sugar is exported from the factory to Sudan, Kenya, and Somalia. Ethiopia benefits significantly from the factory's exports. The factory is projected to have a good social impact in addition to its economic benefits. The plant employs and trains locals, while simultaneously sponsoring the development of schools, clinics, and other social infrastructure initiatives. 15. The Aludo Langano Geothermal Power Plant The Aludo Langano Geothermal Power Plant is located in the Ethiopian Rift Valley, near the Aludo Volcano. The project area is in Ethiopia's Oromia region, about 200 kilometers south of Addis Ababa, the capital city. The plant's principal goal is to create electricity utilizing geothermal energy. Geothermal power has been identified as a clean and sustainable source of electricity in Ethiopia, and this project contributes to the country's renewable energy ambitions. To generate energy, the geothermal power plant uses heat from beneath the Earth's surface. Drilling geothermal wells allows access to hot water and steam reservoirs deep within the Earth. This high-pressure steam powers turbines and generators, which generate energy. The plant is designed to generate power in the tens to hundreds of megawatts range, depending on the number of wells and turbines constructed. 
This energy is fed into Ethiopia's national grid. Geothermal energy is regarded as an environmentally benign source of energy. When compared to fossil fuel-based power generation, it creates less greenhouse gas emissions and air pollution. In addition, when compared to large-scale hydroelectric dams, the project has a lower impact on local ecosystems. 14. Guide 4 Dam Guide 4 is an Ethiopian hydroelectric generating plant on the Omo River. It is the fourth and largest of the Omo River's jibe dams. The dam is in the Oromia region, approximately 400 kilometers southwest of Addis Abeba. Guide 4 is a run-of-river dam, which means it holds no water. Instead, it harnesses the river's natural flow to generate electricity. The dam has a capacity of 2,200 megawatt, making it Ethiopia's largest hydroelectric plant. Salini Kostratori, a Chinese construction business, built Guide IV. The dam was completed in 2016 and went into commercial operation in 2017. Gaib IV is Ethiopia's primary source of energy. The dam produces enough electricity to power more than 10 million homes. The dam also serves as an irrigation source for farmers in the Oma River Basin. 13. The Adama Industrial Park The Adama Industrial Park is located in the Ethiopian Oromia region, in the town of Adama. Adama is strategically located around 100 kilometers southeast of Addis Abeba and is well connected by road and rail networks. The park's major goal is to foster industry in Ethiopia. It offers a ready-made infrastructure and business climate that will appeal to both domestic and foreign companies. The park's goal is to increase job creation, exports, and economic growth. The industrial park provides a variety of infrastructure and amenities to accommodate various companies. Factory sheds, warehouses, office spaces, power supply, water, wastewater treatment, and security services are all included. The park is intended to be a one-stop shop for enterprises wanting to establish or expand their operations. The Ethiopian government has extensively advertised the Adama Industrial Park to investors as a business-friendly site. It provides a variety of incentives, such as tax reductions and other financial rewards, to attract both domestic and international enterprises. Adama Industrial Park focuses mostly on light manufacturing and export-oriented enterprises. It is home to businesses involved in textiles and apparel, footwear, and agro-processing, among other things. Adama Industrial Parks contribute considerably to the local and national economies. They generate new job possibilities, support economic development, and boost export capacity. Because of its proximity to Addis Abeba and access to road and rail networks, the park is well connected for the transfer of commodities and materials. This connectivity is a big benefit for the park's companies. 12. The Gemma Industrial Park the Jaima Industrial Park is a multi-sectoral industrial park in Jima, Ethiopia's Oromia region. It is one of Ethiopia's 13 industrial parks that are currently active. The park, which spans 75 hectares, was dedicated in 2019. The Jaima Industrial Park is intended to attract both domestic and foreign investors in the textile and clothing, agro-processing, and light manufacturing sectors. Investors can benefit from tax savings, duty-free imports, and access to trained personnel at the park. The park is part of a larger project to develop several industrial parks throughout Ethiopia. Collectively, these industrial parks contribute to the country's economic reform and industrialization efforts. The Gemma Industrial Park is estimated to generate over $1 billion in income per year and create over 15,000 employment. The park is also anticipated to improve Ethiopian exports and aid the country's industrialization efforts. 11. The Deborum Burhan Industrial Park The Deborum Burhan Industrial Park is located in Deborum Burhan, Ethiopia, in the North Shua zone of the Amhara region. It is around 130 kilometers north of Addis Abeba, the capital city. The Deborum Burhan Industrial Park's principal goal is to encourage industry in Ethiopia. 
It provides the infrastructure and facilities required for both domestic and foreign enterprises to set up and operate manufacturing and processing plants. Factory sheds, warehouses, office spaces, power supply, water, wastewater treatment, and security services are all available in the industrial park. These facilities are intended to attract and support a variety of sectors, including textiles, clothing, and agriculture. The Ethiopian government actively promotes the Debor Burhan Industrial Park as a potential investment site. To attract firms and create a good investment climate, the park provides different advantages, such as tax cuts and a pleasant business environment. Debur Burhan Industrial Park focuses mostly on light manufacturing and export-oriented enterprises. The park has drawn enterprises involved in textile and garment production, which are among Ethiopia's fastest expanding export sectors. By producing jobs, encouraging economic development, and increasing export capability, the industrial park benefits both the local and national economies. Debris Burhan Industrial Parks are critical components of Ethiopia's economic reform agenda. 10. The Mekili Industrial Park The Mekili Industrial Park is a multi-sectoral industrial park in Ethiopia's Tigray region. It is one of Ethiopia's 13 industrial parks that are currently active. The park, which spans 75 hectares, was dedicated in 2017. The Mekili Industrial Park is intended to attract both domestic and international investors in the textile and clothing, agro-processing, and other light manufacturing industries. Investors can benefit from tax savings, duty-free imports, and access to trained personnel at the park. The Mekeli Industrial Park is estimated to generate over $400 million in income per year and create over 20,000 employment. The park is also anticipated to improve Ethiopian exports and aid the country's industrialization efforts. The Mekeli Industrial Park represents a significant investment in Ethiopia's future. It has the potential to have a substantial economic, social, and environmental impact in Ethiopia. 9. The Kambolcha Industrial Park the Kambolcha Industrial Park is located in Kambolcha, which is part of the South Walo Zone in Ethiopia's Amhara region. Kambolcha is around 375 kilometers north of Addis Abeba, the capital city. The Kambolcha Industrial Park's principal goal is to advance Ethiopian industrialization. It provides the infrastructure and facilities required to allow the establishment and operation of both domestic and foreign manufacturing and processing industries. Factory sheds, warehouses, office spaces, electricity supply, water supply and treatment, waste management, and security services are all available in the industrial park. These facilities are intended for use by a variety of businesses, including textiles, garments, and agro-processing. The Ethiopian government actively promotes Kambolcha Industrial Park as an investment destination. To attract enterprises and establish a favorable investment climate, the park provides different advantages, such as tax breaks and a suitable business environment. The Kambolcha Industrial Park focuses on light manufacturing and export-oriented enterprises. It has attracted textile and garment manufacturing enterprises, which are among Ethiopia's flourishing export sectors. 8. The Dyer Dawa Industrial Park the Dyer Dawa Industrial Park is a multi-sectoral industrial park in the Ethiopian city of Dyer Dawa. It is one of Ethiopia's 13 industrial parks that are currently active. The park, which spans 150 hectares, was dedicated in 2020. The park is intended to attract both domestic and foreign investors in the garment, apparel, and textile industries. Investors can benefit from tax savings, duty-free imports, and access to trained personnel at the park. The park is estimated to generate more than 10,000 jobs and more than $7.8 million in income every year. The park is also anticipated to improve Ethiopian exports and aid the country's industrialization efforts. 7. The Hawassa Industrial Park the Hawassa Industrial Park is located in Hawassa, which is the capital of Ethiopia's southern nations, nationalities, and peoples region. 
It is around 275 kilometers south of Addis Abeba, Ethiopia's capital city. The Hawassa Industrial Park's principal goal is to advance Ethiopian industrialization. It provides critical infrastructure and facilities to support the construction and operation of both domestic and foreign manufacturing and processing companies. Factory sheds, warehouses, office spaces, electricity supply, water supply and treatment, wastewater management, and security services are all available in the industrial park. These facilities serve a variety of sectors, including textiles, garments, and agro-processing. The Ethiopian government actively advertises the Hawassa Industrial Park as an appealing investment destination. To attract enterprises and establish a favorable investment climate, the park provides a variety of incentives, including tax breaks. The Hawassa Industrial Park focuses mostly on light manufacturing and export-oriented enterprises. It has successfully attracted textile and garment manufacturing enterprises, which are among Ethiopia's thriving export sectors. The industrial park has a substantial impact on the local and national economies by creating job opportunities, boosting economic growth, and increasing export possibilities. Hawassa industrial parks are critical to Ethiopia's economic reform strategy. 6. Majo Dry Port Majo Dry Port is a dry port in Majo, Ethiopia, approximately 70 kilometers southeast of Addis Ababa. It is Ethiopia's largest dry port and one of the largest in Africa. The dry port, which covers an area of 200 hectares, was opened in 2009. Majo Dry Port is a multimodal transportation hub that offers a variety of services such as container handling, warehousing, customs processing and transportation to and from the harbor. Packaging and labeling are examples of value-added services. The port is intended to cut the cost and time required to carry commodities to and from Ethiopia. The dry port will also help Ethiopia's export and import activities run more smoothly. The port has been critical to Ethiopia's economic progress. The dry port has contributed to lower import costs, increasing Ethiopia's exports, and making the country more competitive in the global market. The dry port has also helped the local economy by creating jobs. Majo Dry Port is a dry port in Majo, Ethiopia, approximately 70 kilometers southeast of Addis Ababa. It is Ethiopia's largest dry port and one of the largest in Africa. The dry port, which covers an area of 200 hectares, was opened in 2009. 5. Addis Ababa's Bull International Airport Addis Ababa's Bull International Airport is located in Ethiopia. It is the country's principal international gateway and one of East Africa's busiest airports. The Bull International Airport expansion's major goal is to increase the airport's capacity, efficiency, and services. The project intends to increase passenger capacity, improve cargo handling capabilities, and position Bull Airport as a vital hub for international and domestic aircraft. The airport facilities will be built and renovated as part of the expansion project. Construction of new runways, terminal buildings, control towers, taxiways, cargo facilities, and other infrastructure to support larger planes and more passengers is included. The airport's capacity will be greatly increased as a result of the extension project, allowing it to handle more flights and people. This is especially crucial for Addis Abeba, which serves as a key transit hub for African passengers. A modern and expanded international airport benefits both the local and national economies. It promotes tourism, trade, and business development, resulting in employment creation and new prospects for local enterprises. Ethiopia has grand intentions to develop Bull International Airport into a regional aviation center. The development is part of the country's ambition to compete with other large regional airports and attract additional international carriers. The country's flag carrier, Ethiopian Airlines, is a major operator at Bull International Airport. The expansion project is inextricably related to Ethiopian Airlines' growth and objectives, which seek to become one of Africa's largest and most competitive airlines. The problems of expanding and renovating an international airport include maintaining safety, minimizing delays to ongoing operations, and coordinating development to meet international aviation standards. 
4. The Lamu Port South Sudan Ethiopia Transport the Lamu Port South Sudan Ethiopia Transport Link is a projected East African transport and logistics link. Through a network of roads, railroads, oil pipelines, and airports, the corridor will connect Kenya's new Lamu Port to South Sudan and Ethiopia. The project is one of Africa's major infrastructural projects. It is expected to cost more than $23 billion and take more than 20 years to complete. Kenya. South Sudan and Ethiopia are working together to create the project. The African Union and other foreign partners are also on board with the project. The project is predicted to have a considerable impact on Kenya's, South Sudan's, and Ethiopia's economies. The project is projected to stimulate trade and investment, create jobs, and improve millions of people's lives. The following are some of the advantages of the project. Increased trade. The project will make transporting commodities between Kenya, South Sudan, and Ethiopia easier and less expensive. This is expected to increase trade among the three countries, as well as with other countries in the region. Increased investment. The initiative will bring in more foreign capital to the three countries. This is intended to stimulate the economy of the three countries. Job creation. During development and operation, the project is estimated to provide millions of jobs. The project is a significant investment in East Africa's future. It has the potential to have a big impact on Kenya's, South Sudan's, and Ethiopia's economies. The project is projected to stimulate trade and investment, create jobs, and improve millions of people's lives. 3. The Addis Ababa Adama Expressway the Addis Ababa Adama Expressway is a critical link connecting two of Ethiopia's most important cities. Addis Ababa is the country's capital and largest city, while Adama serves as an important regional hub. The highway is crucial in easing the transportation of people, commodities, and services between these cities. The expressway is one of Ethiopia's major roadways, stretching for approximately 84 kilometers. This distance normally takes one to two hours to travel, depending on traffic conditions. The expressway is a toll road, and users must pay tolls in order to access and use it. These tolls help to fund the highway's upkeep and operation. The expressway is a dual carriageway, which means it has two distinct highways, each with numerous lanes running in opposing directions. This design aids in the improvement of traffic flow and safety. The expressway has a substantial economic benefit since it improves freight transportation, particularly between Addis Ababa and the Adama Industrial Park and other industrial districts. It promotes industrialization, trade, and commerce. Aside from connecting Addis Ababa and Adama, the expressway is an important transit link to Ethiopia's eastern and southern regions. It allows visitors to reach other towns and cities in the area. The expressway can be congested, particularly during peak travel periods. To solve this issue, the government has been working on expanding and improving the road. 2. The Addis Ababa Djibouti Railway The Addis Ababa Djibouti Railway, also known as the Ethiopia Djibouti Railway, is a 756-kilometer electrified railway line that connects Addis Ababa, Ethiopia's capital, to Djibouti's port of Djibouti. China Railway Group Limited and China Civil Engineering Construction Corporation built the railway, which opened in January 2018. The Addis Ababa Djibouti Railway is East Africa's first electrified railway route. It is also Africa's highest railway line, with an elevation gain of approximately 2,400 meters between Addis Ababa and Djibouti. The Addis Ababa Djibouti Railway represents a significant investment in Ethiopia's infrastructure. Ethiopia's commerce and economic development are projected to benefit from the railway. It will also reduce Ethiopia's dependency on expensive and inefficient road transportation. The Addis Ababa Djibouti Railway has several advantages, including cost savings. It is predicted that the railway will lower the cost of carrying commodities to and from Ethiopia. This would increase Ethiopia's competitiveness in the global market. Improved efficiency. The railway is projected to boost Ethiopia's export and import operations. This will speed up the transport of products to and from Ethiopia. Job creation. 
During construction and operation, the railway created jobs. This has benefited the local economy and improved the lives of the people who live there. 1. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam GERD. The GDRD's principal goal is to generate electricity through hydropower. It is intended to offer a secure and sustainable energy supply in order to fulfill Ethiopia's increasing energy demands, encourage industrialization, and lessen the country's reliance on fossil fuels. The GDRD is a massive dam with a reservoir capacity of approximately 74 billion cubic meters. The dam is intended to generate 6,000 megawatts of electricity, making it one of Africa's greatest hydropower projects. The GDRD's construction began in 2011. Ethiopia funded the project with domestic funds, bonds, and contributions from Ethiopian people and the Ethiopian diaspora. In addition, the administration sought overseas funding. The GERD has sparked regional debate and diplomatic tensions, particularly with Egypt and Sudan. These downstream countries are concerned that the dam's development may restrict their access to Nile water. Egypt, in particular, has expressed concerns about the potential impact on its water supplies and has been in talks with Ethiopia and Sudan to resolve these issues. Negotiations have taken place over the years under the auspices of several international entities, including the African Union, the United States, and the European Union, with the goal of obtaining a fair and equitable agreement addressing the functioning of the GERD and its impact on downstream countries. The GERD is a great technological accomplishment in hydropower. However, its environmental impact, especially concerns about Nile sedimentation and its implications, has been the topic of debate and research. Proponents of the GERD highlight the possible benefits, which include increased electricity generation, regional energy commerce, and improved irrigation and agricultural development in Ethiopia and potentially downstream countries. They say that the dam might help reduce poverty and enhance living conditions in Ethiopia. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, as well as a sub so more people can see our content. Catch you guys in the next video.